When most people think of Somerville, they usually think of Porter and they think of Davis Square. And those are great parts of Somerville. I love them. I have a lot of clients who love them. There's nothing wrong with those areas whatsoever. But in today's video, I'm gonna share five hidden parts of Somerville that are maybe a little bit more underappreciated and for many different reasons, so stay tuned. Hey, if you guys don't know me, my name is Sage Jankwitz. I'm a realtor based in Cambridge in Somerville, Massachusetts. I've closed over 300 transactions in the last three years. I have also lived in and around Cambridge and Somerville for the last 10-ish years. Before we get into the video, please take a second to hit that subscribe button. If you guys have any questions, make sure you hit the Calendly link in the description below. I'm happy to hop on a free 15-minute call. So the very first place we're gonna start with is Gilman Square. A lot of people aren't that familiar with this part of Somerville. There's a lot of awesome things happening. It's right by the new Somerville High School, recently built. It's a beautiful high school. And tucked behind there where Sorma Restaurant is, is Gilman Square, Gilman Station, where the new Green Line is. It's just 20 minutes on the T to downtown Boston. It's a super short commute. A lot of people are not aware, again, of this part of town as the Green Line is relatively new as of the shooting of this video. It's also very close to the highway on Route 93. So if you're a commuter, it's very easy to hop on and get around town. It's a little bit of a quieter area in the sense that you're probably gonna be driving to get to most of the cool things that you wanna go to. So if you have a car, or if you're someone who's looking to maybe save a little bit, if you're an investor, if you're a young younger person who's looking to save a little bit on your first condo, it's a really good option. Now, what we're gonna do is on the left-hand side here, I'm gonna share comparisons of the averages for both singles, condos, and multifamilies for the Gilman Square area as compared to all of Somerville. So you can see kind of where they peg out. You'll see that singles are a little bit cheaper in Gilman Square and same with condos and multis. Not hugely cheaper, but a little bit cheaper. And I think there's some really great value to be had in this part of town. The next one that we're going to go into is the neighborhood of Ten Hills. And I've talked about this in a number of videos because I do think it's a hidden gem. The biggest issue with Ten Hills, unfortunately, is it's just a very small geographical area. So there's not often and a lot of opportunities to buy in this part of Somerville, but I do think it's a hidden gem. And for a few reasons, it's right along the Mystic River, which is really nice for walking, jogging, biking. It's really beautiful, especially in the warmer months. It's also a very busy semi-highways kind of street, so it isn't super awesome to have to cross. But if you get right across that street, the other side is Assembly Row. Assembly Row has the Orange Line, of course, which is just a 12 minute T-ride to downtown Boston. So an unbelievably short commute and an assembly of everything you need. You have your grocery stores, you have your cafes, you have your restaurants, whatever you need, it's right there. And again, it's also very close to the highway 93 if you're commuters. The big issue again with 10 Hills though, is just there's not a lot out there. Again, you're gonna see the data in the upper left corner here in terms of what's happening with singles, condos and multis. Unfortunately, actually there just wasn't enough data for single families in 10 Hills for this particular video, but you'll notice that condos were a little bit cheaper. And multis tend to be significantly cheaper. It will depend on, of course, the quality, the number of beds and baths in 10 Hills, but you tend to have pretty good rental numbers compared to price for 10 Hills. So it's definitely worth adding to your search if you're a multifamily buyer or a condo townhouse buyer as well. Next up, we have Magoon Square. Magoon Square is another one that's up and coming category. It's changed a lot over the last handful of years. There's some really cool restaurants there. There's a CVS, but it isn't, again, a place like Davis or Porter where you go into downtown and there's a lot of things happening. But now with the Green Line, it's just super convenient. We're talking a 25 minute commute on the Green Line to downtown Boston. So still not too shabby, really not too bad, I expect the area around Magoon Square to continue to develop and get cooler over the next five to 10 years. So I think it's a great place to buy and invest in. Again, there's a couple of cool things happening and it's about a 20-ish minute walk to 15 minute, depending on exactly where you are, to places like Davis on the bike path or to Union Square. So it can be a really nice area and can be relatively convenient as well. You can see the numbers again in the upper left corner over here, some really good price points, single families, again, 100,000 
thousand below average single family price overall for Somerville. Although condos in Magoon have been getting more expensive, I attribute a lot of that to a lot of developers. There's been a lot of developers in Magoon Square who have purchased two or three family properties and flip them. So the prices have gone up quite a bit. So, but if you were to buy, you know, a unit that's maybe a little bit older, even something that was a flip from 10, 15 years ago, you can get some pretty good value still. Multifamilies you'll see are actually above the average in Magoon Square. And that's mostly due to the fact that it is up and coming. The new green lines here, and because there's been quite a bit of development in this part of Somerville with the flippers, the housing stocks improved and therefore the area is starting to change rapidly. And so that's reflected in the price point there for multis. Number two, East Somerville. East Somerville is a really cool area. It's definitely more in the up and coming category. I put this one as sort of a part of Somerville that is a little bit further behind than some of the other areas we're talking about in terms of changing. I do think it is and will change, but if I were to buy in this area, I would treat it more of a one longer range situation and go in knowing that. It is only an 18 minute T-ride to downtown Boston from the new East Somerville stop, which is incredible. So something you definitely want to think about. There's also some really cool historical homes that I've been in in East Somerville. They have some really beautiful interiors. If you're willing to put some work into some of these homes, you can get some great value. I've also seen some multifamilies that are extremely well-priced, especially if you're on a bit of a tight budget and looking, especially for like a three family, it can be really hard in Somerville, but East Somerville is an area, again, if you're willing to weather, uh, I don't want to say the weather the storm, but kind of go through some things where, you know, it's more up and coming. It's going to take a little time to continue to gentrify. I think East Somerville has a lot of upside if you can hang on long enough. It's also very close to Route 93, again, as are a lot of other parts of Somerville. So very easy to get into the highway. You're very close to one of my favorite restaurants, Oliveira's. Huge shout out there if you love Brazilian food. Super awesome. I go there all the time. So definitely a good place to buy if you're more long-term thinking. If you're more short-term, East Somerville probably wouldn't be one of the first places I would target. And number one, and I keep bringing it up because I just love this part of town so much, Union Square. Maybe it's not super hidden, but I do find that a lot of people, especially people that are relocating from out of state, out of the country, they talk to their friends, everyone says, Davis Porter, Davis Porter. And I think Union Square very soon will be part of that Davis Porter conversation. And then sometimes it already is there. There are so many many cool restaurants. You have the Green Lion, which is just the short 15 minute ride to downtown Boston. It's crazy to say that now, where Union Square used to be a very far a schlep to get to the nearest tea stop. It was a much worse commute. Tons of great things happening there. There's so much development planned over the next 10 years. It's already super cool. And in my opinion, in the same level as the Davidson Porter. But I think as time continues to go on over the next handful of years, it will get to that level. And I would not be shocked if 10, 15 years from now, Union is seen as even a more desirable place than a Davis or Porter for your average renter or your buyer. Hopefully this video was helpful. You'll see the data up here for Union Square as well. So definitely take a look. If you guys have any questions, you can always reach out on Calendly for a free 15 minute conversation. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.